Hello everybody and welcome back to McKenzie's Hobbies. Hope you're all having a great day. We're starting out this little mini series in SolidWorks, going over a plan, all the parts and pieces to it, and then afterwards we're going to go through the manufacturing of all of it. Alright, so I currently have a Solar 12K on the wall, and while it's an amazing machine, I had problems with it overheating, and after a little back and forth with Solark, in a long story short, they ended up just offering to upgrade me to a remanufactured 15K for no charge. This kind of customer service is really rare in the industry, but it's almost the norm with Solark, always going above and beyond from what I've heard and from my own personal experience. So the system that's in my home right now was installed by a professional solar installer with a couple of requests and suggestions from myself along the way. And we're going to reuse some of it, but a lot of it's getting replaced. And we're going to also get to see where they cut some corners that I didn't know about. First things first, I started by kindly asking Solark if they had a CAD file for the 15K, which they graciously sent over. But it kind of bit me in the butt at the end of the day. More on that later. Uh, you can see first thing I was able to lay out where the studs were on the wall behind the drywall. This was handy because the factory bracket doesn't really match up with where I wanted to hang the inverter. You can see I wanted the inverter a little offset. I'm going to make this new one with some slaughtered holes offset to one side. I also have just a simple model showing where the sub panel is and the 6-50 welding outlet is. Uh, that just leaves us with the wire trough that I have planned out. It went through several revisions and a couple times I started over from scratch, but this is what I came up with. The entire thing is going to be made out of some 80 thou aluminum with the side caps riveted on, both on each side. The access panel will bolt on. Starting from the left side here, the side cap has some holes cut out where some external wiring going in or out can come through, as well as two 15 amp outlets on the right side. We have this little hole here that's going to be for a 14-50 outlet, similar to the one that we put on the outside of the DIY solar trailer. Uh, if you haven't seen that little mini series, I recommend you check it out. This outlet will be for our Tesla charger. I'm currently using the 6-50 outlet, but I wanted to free it up for when I actually need to use the welder. Once we open this thing up, you can see there is quite a bit going on here. But for one, you can see we have all this open area in the bottom for ventilation. As some of you might know, the 15K has its cooling system drawing fresh air from the bottom and exhaust it out the top as any electronic component should. So we have a lot of open area here that will get covered with some perforated metal to prevent any unwanted intrusion. The slot on the left side over here Will be where all the DC wiring comes in. I just made it nice and big, give me some options in case I need to change anything in the future. I'll also wrap this in some edge trim to prevent me scuffs and scrapes on the insulation. The other holes across the back are just like the ones in the side, just give me options if I want to run anything else in or out, like communication cables or anything. Now, full disclosure, I have already completed this whole project. The inverter is already up on the wall and running great. Um, so I'm actually going into this video with some foresight of it already being done. So here are the parts that actually bit me in the butt. Uh, the first is the holes in the bottom where all the AC, DC, PV and communication wires come through are not actually accurate in this model that Solar gave me. Some of them are up to a quarter inch off and, and I have no idea why. It's still usable and not the end of the world, but it doesn't look perfect and my OCD is really hot and bothered about it. Uh, the next one is this bus bar. The 15K comes with two terminals instead of a single one for a single cable and there are other companies that already make this bus bar for around 60 or 70 bucks. I just didn't want to spend the money on what I could already make out of some scrap copper. Joke's on me though as these terminals are actually like three quarters of an inch higher in this model and these nice bus bars that I cut are too short. So I'll remake them sometime, but for now we'll just run without it. After that, I've already cut the holes for mounting the trough to the each stud. So it's nice and easy to just hold it up there, send a long through through it without measuring every hole and having a hard time. Uh, the last part is where the PV wires are going to come through with existing EMT coming down from the attic. 
just into this hole here. More EMT coming down with some Cat 5E with my CT sensor wires here. These are in the exact same spot on the existing wire trough, so it'll just make my whole job a whole lot easier. The existing wiring from the panel to the inverter already runs through a hole cut through some drywall right here. So it just runs down the panel, out the drywall, and into the bottom of the inverter. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing, so that makes it really easy. Now we've gone over our plan. Our next step is going to work and show you some of the process of making this whole wire drop. All right, good morning. We're here at my work. Let's go inside and make some parts. All right, this is our first stop. This is our Mitsubishi fiber optic laser. We're going to load up some material here on this pallet changer. We're going to send it in. We're going to cut some parts, send it out, and then we can move on to our next step. Here we go. All right, these parts look great. We had a couple tip ups, but nothing too serious. Let's get these parts out, throw our scrap away and go over to the press break. All right, I lied. This is gonna be our first stop here at the Time Saver. Just a big wide belt sander. And uh, it's gonna be used to put a grain, a nice uniform finish on all these parts, including the wire trough and the lid. So I'll show you what that looks like now. And then you can see the finish difference. This is much more uniform, gets all the scratches out of it. It could look a lot nicer. See the door. And now the big piece. And we are all set, ready to perform it. Let's go. All right, now then, here's our next stop. We got the press break here. We already have our tooling loaded up. We've got our part here ready for forming. I have the machine all programmed. We are ready to form. Let's get to it. All right, there we go. Side profile is all done. Our wire trough is cut, formed, ready to go on the wall. Let's see if the end cap fits. And there we have it. I set the end cap on there, all the rivets just dropped right in. You can see the corners and edges all lined up really nice. I'm super happy with how it turned out. So now I get to take it home, mount it on the wall, set the Solark on top of it, and get started with the next part of this series. Stay tuned for that next video, it should pop up soon. I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and have a great day.